Topic number five, some quick hitters. Uh, I'll start this one off. We don't have it on the uh, rundown, but I'll put it here very quickly. Uriah Hall has retired, BC. I don't know if you saw this. It came just before the show. He put out a statement. I won't read the whole thing, but basically he says that he's stepping away and he's going to miss everyone. Uh, he, of course, is coming off that loss. I saw him at the airport. Did I tell you that? I, did, I think I did tell you that. When we left, what was the last time when we were in Vegas? When we got, when we, got we all had the uh, the Rona. It was for National Fight, Fight Week. Week. So they, the cab drops me off on the middle. There's sort of three lanes. Keep going, stop, and then there's like the other cab lane. I was in the middle one, and I was crossing the crosswalk, and there's this Mercedes that pulls up. He had, a, he had like a G wagon. Damn, it was a nice car. Yeah, and I had noticed it was him, but you know, I I don't really bother celebrities or fighters in in, in public, and uh, I only do when intoxicated. Yeah, only when I'm intoxicated, which I was not at the time. But I had to wait because there were cars passing in between me and where he was. And as I'm walking, he kind of leans his head out the car. He's like, hey. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, you're that MMA guy. <laughs> and I go, yeah. He goes, okay. And that was it. Remember I, I had him on MK and he was like, oh, I know you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Have we talked a bunch of shit about him? I don't feel like we have. No, but. I don't feel like we have. Uh, he was, by the way, uh, Pennington James's uh, sensei for a while. <laughs> Remember Jay claims he did that spinning kick and I asked... I asked uh, Uriah about it, and he's like, I don't recall that man. He finishes with a record of 17 and 11 in MMA, 10 and 9 in the UFC. And he's 38 years old, of course, competed 19 times under the UFC banner. Was a contender, 85 pounds, for a long time. Had one of the best knockouts on the Ultimate Fighter ever. And he's in, would you say, like, he never quite lived up to the buzz, whether it was fair no, or not, that not. came from that. And he had a really good career. I mean, although there's some asterisks to some of these wins, he did beat. Anderson Silva, Gegard Mousasi, and Chris Weidman. Okay, the Weidman one, do you really count it? It was an old Anderson. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But, like, he's beaten some legitimate guys. He's always been a warrior and tough and always been a knockout threat. But at times had, like, can he get to this image of where we think he can be from that one highlight, right? It was maybe unfair, and he never lived up to it. But especially in that most recent run, he seemed to really be close to the title level and, and, and always seemed to be fighting for a purpose, you know, whether it was his, his family and, or, or something inspirational. I've always really loved what Uriah Hall stands for and who he is. It's But it has been unfair that he was spinning back a guy. Why can't he do that at the championship level? Mm -hmm. um, he obviously had gotten with uh, Safe Saoud at a 4 to MMA. His last fight was against Andre Muniz, and Muniz was just, you know, kind of all over him. And uh, he didn't take a beating or anything, but uh, it was just a tough fight for him. So he called it a day. I, I would say he had a good career, um, you know, and was a very talented fighter, and I wish him the best in the, uh, the next chapter. Okay, BC. Uh, you were like, let's get to the next topic. Well, these are quick hitters, not like okay. not like BC filibusters. I would, I would just, you know, he beat a young Maheta. Don't forget that as well. That's okay. true. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony Ferguson has apparently relocated to Jackson Wink. Now, following his KO loss to uh, Michael Chandler, which was a bad one, he said he needs to get back with the team. Quote, I put myself away from the teams thinking I could do this by myself, and I did it. He's right. He actually did do it. But I've done this by myself for a very long time with the help of a few select individuals, and I've been very fortunate to have that. But I'm ready to be a part of a team again. It was only when my team broke up that I felt really hurt that I had moved areas, that I had moved situations, switched management and all the above. I have to open myself up again to being coached at a high level, especially in my sport. What do you think about the the the, the switch? I mean, I wish him well. Is it, it, it getting a new set of strategic minds? Could that help him? It really comes down to, sorry for covering my mic, it really comes down to... Uh, you know, how much is really in the tank? And we don't know, and I don't even know if he does, Luke. How much is really in the tank? What's the safe amount left in the tank to, to pour out there? Because right. he's a guy who is always all in at all times. I don't know. 37, 38 years old. It's a tough spot I mean, if, if he could be the comeback opponent for Connor and we can make this a big deal, I'd love it. Outside of that, I don't really know what the future's going to look like for I'll him. I'll say this. I don't know what it means and what it will do for him, but probably doing what he had been doing was not the best idea. So getting with a team, getting with Brandon Gibson – I know folks have sort of said that the, the stock of Jackson Wink is not what it once was, which is true, but they still do have capable trainers there, and I do think that team environment will be better for him, all things being what they are. So we'll they see what happens. They got Arlene Blenko there. Your favorite, uh, to be clear. All right, so they, we, we have Fury wants the Chisora fight, but it's all bullshit, right? So here's the deal. Tyson Fury came out through a series of videos in the last 24 hours online saying, I'm coming out of retirement. I want a, tra a trilogy fight with Derek Chisora. Now here's the deal. He fought Derek Chisora twice. One, a, a, a clear decision win for Tyson where he boxed very well. The second one, I think he knocked him out late. Chisora's, you know, Chisora just beat Kubat Prulev, and he's a noted warrior, but there's no a malcontent. want or anything for a third fight. And why would you think Fury would want one? Yet Fury has always talked about when he said, what fights do I want to finish my career with? He's always linked Chisora in there oddly. He also claimed he was changing trainers in a, I believe, a lightweight fighter in his own stable. I forgot the guy's name. He suddenly named him as trainer. Even... 
Sugar Hill Stewart, his current trainer, right from the Kronk Gym, responded on Instagram with, like, uh, good luck with that, buddy. So we're all like, is this a joke? What is it? Well, Dan Raphael of Fight Freaks Unite caught up with Bob Arum, and in their extended interview, Arum basically said, uh, yeah, this is just Tyson Fury board today, knowing he could mess with the media, knowing he could get in the headlines, and he stirred it up. We have no plans for Chisora, and the last time I talked to Tyson, he wants to fight the winner of Usyk Joshua 2, which is about, what, a week and a half away. It's going to be absolutely massive. Uh, all right, so now we go to Rose Namajunas, who is not ruling out BC, a move to 125 What do you pounds. think about that? Because I'm too much of a Rose super fan to talk fair on this one. So what do I you don't think? know how, what it's going to mean for her physically. I have always thought one, the 115 was where she could optimize that lean frame, but I think the last time I spoke to her, I do recall her saying that she was getting bigger, putting on more muscle, and so maybe she's kind of... And also, like, you know, where is she going to go 115? Because... Her career has been kind of up and down in the sense of, like, in title fights, out of title oh, fights, yeah. in title fights. Maybe it's a fresh start. But here's what she says. She told this to MMA Fighting, quote, The thing I do know for a fact, and I don't know when exactly I might fight again, but I do know that I want to do a grappling match of some sort. I want to really rack up some experience in that department. Also, once I get my other things in order, I'll be lifting lots of weights and maybe putting a little more muscle and just kind of see what happens from there. I, she goes, I really don't know. Like I said, just one more step at a time. The UFC has given me some offers for things. And I just need time to to just not think about fighting at all. And then in the fall, I'll kind of lay out everything and see what makes sense. Talking about a move to flyweight. Interesting. It's a, We always say it, and it's true. It's a shorter path potentially to the top. But how would you see that frame against a Tyler Santos, who's the, you know, the big sort of, who, who by the way, isn't she opting out of surgery, Tyler Santos? I don't know if I saw that or not. I think oh, I she's her opting, eye, you mean? Yeah. yeah. To, uh, so, um... We'll see what we'll see. This is, I mean, look, the, historically, Rose, if she goes to second division and can compete for a title, can can really do a lot. And, and she's still young enough, Luke. And um, yeah, I, I'm intrigued by this. Intrigued is the reveal. word I would use as well. I don't think she lost her last fight, but it was the weirdest fight ever against Carla, right? I mean, it was just so freaking. It was weird. terrible, terrible fight. All right, uh, Cyborg is finalizing apparently a plan for her boxing debut. She told something called the Catch Up. Forgive me for not knowing what it is. Quote. My team already received the contract. We've been back and forth working on the contract. I believe soon we'll finish it and I'll sign. Then you guys are going to know who and where is going to be my next fight. I'm very excited to do my first fight in boxing. Very, very excited. It's one of my dreams. Now, of course, I saw her kickboxing fight live against Urena Bars. And Bars whooped her. I mean, that's the best way to put it. Demolished her. Although Cyborg stood in there for the whole fight, which was pretty fucking incredible. Did Bars look like Patrick Swayze and Roadhouse? Just kicking some ass. Good transition to another quick hitter. Conor McGregor going to star in a roadhouse. We've race. already been over that All one. Right. Sorry, I was when, on you were, when you were on vacation for the yeah, 70th time. I'm always building connective here. tissue and bridges for you to enter my. So part of the deal with her leaving UFC and signing with Bellator, I think, was to get, you know, she wanted a promoter who liked her was one part. But the other one was a little bit more freedom to do stuff like yes. this. What is your level of enthusiasm for Because I'll say this. She can't. Do I think she can beat somebody very good in boxing? Probably not. But if you had to pick out uh, a MMA fighter who could probably do okay in boxing, Cyborg's on that list, right? No, certainly. I, I believe she could potentially make the transition in her boxing. What is she, 38 now? I mean, it is getting late, but this would be the time to make that move. It really comes down to this for me. Now, she claims she's a free agent, yet she claims she's talking with Scott Coker, potentially being her co-promoter in, in any I boxing see. in Denver, which is interesting. Um, if it's about her fighting the biggest star possible that's closest to her weight in like a an event, a super fight, You'd think that'd be Katie Taylor, the undisputed champion at 135, right, Luke? And, yes. and Cyborg fights at 145, so if that's a special fight. The question I want to ask you is, would it be better to enter a fight like that without having seen what Cyborg can do as a boxer to help the sale value potentially, or to see Cyborg in a potentially winnable crossover fight like this might be? I don't know the level of opponent or who it would be, but to just try to feel out the waters to see what she can do. Well, the question is this. Is she going to headline because I don't think these questions are as important to figure out if she's not headlining. Okay. If she's another fighter, or not another fighter, but let's say a co-main or something like that, where the biggest questions about who can sell and what's the what's the important promotional package yeah. that they put together, they they don't make that as relevant. Well, they're doing ESPN and, and Top Rank is what doing an all female uh, boxing card coming up, and it's, it's going to be what the Clarissa Shields fight against Savannah Marshall for the four belts. Yep. Michaela Mayer is going to be on, all you know. So many fighters are going to be on this. Sinisa Estrada just signed with Top Rank. Uh, if it was something where it could show up on that event, you know, and it could be an introduction, that'd be good. Uh, what do, would you have any interest for her boxing against Holly Holm? A little. Yeah, sure. A little. Okay. The winner gets Katie Taylor. Oh, that's, no. That's, you're just getting, 
I, look, I want Cyborg to do what's going to make her happy, yeah. and uh, she could potentially be marketable in this for sure. Can she make the crossover? Hey, let's find out, you know? Uh, Clarissa Shields just tried it the other way, and she had moderate success, right? Yeah, sprinkles of success. Uh, this takes us now to UFC Fight Night 211. Not 311, but 211. Oh, 311 would be so good, right? <laughs> Omaha style. Is, is the top part of your beard amber, or is that just the color of your energy, Luke? Why don't you dye your hair like shoe polish again, <laughs> fuckface? Uh, oh, you know, you mentioned MMA fighting earlier before you move forward. Do you know who's a real nice guy? I finally got to meet him. Mike Heck. Yeah, he's a very I nice guy. I want to shout out Mike Heck. Real, really nice guy. Very nice guy. And I like his work, too, by the way. Yes, good guy. Uh, UFC 211, they have added Cody Garbrandt at Bantamweight. Taking on Hani Yaya. Now, this card will be headlined by Mackenzie Dern versus Yan Xiaonan. I love that fight. Uh, again, October 1st. We don't, with the venue and location, TBD, BC. Cody Garbrandt, just 31 years of age in a rough patch of it his is career. hard to know what He has lost like. five of his last six, including two in a row. Last one via stoppage back in 2021. Uh, taking on Hani Yaya, who is just, I mean, old as dirt. 37 years old. Wow. He's going to be 38 in September, so he'll be 38 before no the Hani fight. No Hani Yaya slander will be accepted. But, dude, he's on a two-fight win streak. Now, he's not fighting the same quality of opponents, but he's on a two-fight win streak. He's only, like, he had two losses or one loss to Ricky Simone, which was a decision and then a draw against Barzola. And since then, he's beaten a couple guys. Dude, he's, that guy was fighting in the fucking WEC. He's still out there, you know, trying to get it done. I have no idea what the future looks like for Cody Garbrandt. I'm a little nervous, but I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know either. Bantamweight, yeah. obviously, I think is the right move. Let's go back there. Let's yes. reset. I would offer, a, he's got to change something massive.